There is nothing quite as idyllic as Paris in the rain. We're gonna create this watery effect by doing some wet on wet blending, acrylic glaze painting, some stippling for our trees, and then we'll be really, really working in the grayscale and those lights and darks to get this glistening, wet, rainy look everywhere, like these little puddles. So let's go on inside. We'll take a quick peek at how to set up our supplies and then let's paint the Eiffel Tower. For today's painting project, you're going to need something to paint on. I'm working on a standard size stretch canvas. It's 11 by 14 inches, but as you can see, this project works really, really well on a larger size canvas, like a 16 by 20. This painting is grayscale, so all you're going to need for today is a bunch of white and some black. Now I've poured my paint out on a paper plate. You can use all kinds of things for your palette, anything that's a little bit shiny, like old plastic containers that you find in your recycling bin, wax paper, or freezer paper. I'm working on an easel for today, but please feel free to do this project just flat on your painting station at home. Now, since I'm working on an 11 by 14 canvas, I'm only going to be using four brushes today, and they include a number eight filbert, a number six bright brush, and two little round brushes for some of the softer details. The big one there is a number six round and the tiny little pointy one is a number one round. Now I'm gonna give you a few other brushes that I think are really, really great for this project. If you're doing a little 11 by 14 like me, having a smaller square shape brush. This is a number six flat brush. See a little number six there. So having um, a smaller shape brush can be really, really great. If you're working on a larger size, like a 16 by 20, you'll want to include a larger square or rectangle shape brush, like this number 12 flat brush. And what you'll use that for, for the larger size, is for blending um, up and down. We're going to get this rainy effect with some up and down strokes. And these brushes are a little bit small. So if you're working on a 16 by 20 or even bigger, please just make sure to use a bit of a bigger brush just for the background portion of your painting. Whenever we're working with acrylic paints, we need to have water lying around. We use water right in the techniques and of course, to clean the paint off our brushes. Whenever we have water, we also need to make sure we have something to dry our brush. I love using paper towels or old t-shirts and old rags. Of course, sometimes we want to have a dry brush technique, so you always want to have something lying around that you can dry off your brushes on. Now for today's painting, we're not necessarily going to be drawing on our canvas, but whenever there's something figurative that especially is uh, an architectural icon, symmetry is important. So while I don't recommend sketching in the whole tower, since this is a very abstract tower, I do recommend having a pencil, just any graphite pencil. We're gonna draw a very light line down the center as a way to help us get symmetry with our Eiffel Tower. So get yourself a pencil or a watercolor pencil or you know some other sort of drawing medium that's easy to, to wipe away. You may wanna have some paper handy dandy if you wanna practice sketching out your tower and just getting into the feel of the dimensions of the tower beforehand. And last but not least, I always paint with my trusty blow dryer you don't have to have one of these. All this will do is help dry the layers in between the steps. I like these because it saves me time and I tend to be a little bit impatient and I live somewhere much more cold and humid. So I love having one of these around. Okay, that's it for supplies for today's project. Let's go ahead and start step one. This painting has a lot of layers. And whenever we're working in acrylics with a bit more of a complicated background, we do need to always paint the background and then slowly layer on the things that are coming closest to us in space. So first and behind, we're gonna start with the sky and the tower. Then we're gonna get down into the street and sidewalks. Next layer on top of that are these buildings. And last but not least, these pure black trees. So let's go ahead and start our rainy sky. 
Now, whenever we're painting in grayscale, we want to have a wide variety of tones of grays. So we want to have some very, very light grays. Some, so these are really, really light grays. We want to have a bunch of medium grays, some dark grays, and then little bits of pure black and pure white sparingly. So we have a whole, whole range of values in our paintings in the grayscale. Now the sky is going to be those light to slightly medium tones on the edges. So let's go ahead and mix ourselves a light, light gray. Now we're mixing gray, the black, no matter what brand of paint you're using, is gonna have a lot more pigment in it. So we're gonna mix it really slowly. I love mixing with the number six bright brush which is just a square shape brush that is about half an inch wide. We're gonna go just the tip, bloop, into our black and we're gonna add it really slowly to our blob of white. So just grab a little bit for me, you don't need much. And you'll find that just that one little blob is enough to get a nice medium gray. Okay. I'm gonna go the tiniest little bit darker. So I'm going in for a second little boop. Maybe just one more, a little bit more. It's easy to add more little bits of black, but once you get it taken too far, you need like five times the amount of white to try to make it lighter. So if you do get it too dark, it's often best to just mix a whole new color where you'll waste a lot of your white. Okay. I like stopping somewhere around here for a nice light medium gray. And of course, we'll be blending this in with white in the middle to get some lighter hues. So this will be the darkest value in our sky, something a little bit like this. If you're working on a stretch canvas, you've just mixed your color, your brush is loaded with paint. So let's take this opportunity, if you want to paint around your edges, to paint some of this color around our edges. We can really test out our color to see if we like it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint all my sides, warm up our arms. Some painters like the look of wrapping kind of whatever's on the front around the side edges. It's just a stylistic choice. You don't have to do it. Smoosh on a nice layer of gray on those edges. Okay. Now the nice thing about these recorded videos is you can just pause them anytime you want to focus or zoom in on a step. So, you know, just pause and like zone in and get to your kind of painty happy zone. Once you've got your edges though, it's time to bust out that horizon line. And the horizon line is going to be the area where the sky meets the ground. And in both the big version and the little version here, you see I've got a bit more sky than I have ground. There's always a bit more sky than there is ground. So, you know, this would be halfway. I'm going to drop it down just a little bit, so I've got just a bit more sky than ground. So here's the middle. I'm going to drop it down about an inch to get this kind of ratio. Now that's the middle here. We just dropped it down a bit, and let's just take our medium gray, and let's just draw across a little bit less than half, straight across there. Okay, so you know our tower will be sitting here, our street will be coming out here. But before we put the tower on, of course, we have to paint what's in behind it, which is that rainy, rainy sky. So let's rinse off our bright brush. Rinse, rinse, rinse. 
tap it on your napkin. And to get this really rainy look, we're gonna start with this. We're gonna have it light in the center and dark around. But to get the look of rain, instead of doing long, smooth brush strokes, we're gonna do short little strokes. So I always do this in two layers. I do one layer and then oftentimes it gets a little bit dark, so then I usually lighten the central area. But let's get that first coat on. So I'm gonna whack my brush into this gray color, get a nice amount on the sides. And I'm gonna start pulling in some gray, fast and loose. Don't worry about your line on the bottom here. Up and down, we wanna work fast and loose, especially if you live somewhere that's at all you know, hot and dry. Short little streaks, short little streaks for me. Lots of color. So I'm gonna create kind of like this hole in my medium gray. Then rinse. And leave that brush there. Let's pick up our number eight filbert. If you don't have a filbert, just continue on with a nice square shape brush. I'm gonna grab my filbert. I'm gonna go into some pure white, like a nice big dollop, just on the one side. I'm gonna start smooshing this in, fast and loose before my gray dries. And I'm gonna pull it. Remember the, the brush strokes are all up and down, up and down. So filling in this space, Always with these up and down strokes. Okay, now we've got this on. So I pull a thick layer of white in the middle here. I'm gonna take a bit more white. I'm gonna kind of pull some little up and down streaks right into my darker gray. Just filling it all in. Getting some little streaky deekies. Short little strokes. This is our first layer, we'll add some more. But for now, we just wanna get a bit of a lighter center. And I really wanna start blending the central area in a bit more. But before we do, you know, this brush is covered in grays and whites. So we wanna start fresh. We're gonna switch back to our number six bright brush for this. It was in the water, so rinse it and tap it on the napkin. So it's just clean and damp. And now we're gonna come, we've got this kind of nice juicy layer, not huge blobs, but you can see there's quite a bit of paint on there. And now let's come right to the edge of the color, just where the two, where the light really meets the dark. And let's just go up and down, up and down. Little streaks. Now, anytime I come out into this dark area like this, I hold my brush far away so I can just work, use the gravity of the brush, keep it loose. Every time I come out into the gray, I pick it up. So I've picked the gray up and you'll see when I come in here, I'm dragging that gray into here. But let's get this fun, streaky deaky, rainy blend. We can always lighten this up later on. But for now, let's just get this really kind of subtle opening. Whoosh, it's a heavy downpour. It is raining. Okay, so just a little something like this. Now the trick is not to blend it too much because if I you know, keep coming in here and blending, I'm gonna lose some of my fun streakiness. So really soon, I'm gonna have to take my own advice. Put my brush down. 
Okay. This is good though. We've got our first coat and notice how this is much more gray. There's some really light lights in there. That's gonna be in our second coat. But for now, just fill it in fast and loose. Give you permission to be nice and messy here. This is a messy technique. Okay, so once you've got your first roomy layer blocked in there, a little something like this, we are going to allow uh, this part of the painting to dry. So you can either take a dry break and, you know, go have a snack or pet your cats or dogs, hug your kids, run around the block, or you can dry this uh, the artificial way with your blow dryer. I always put mine on hot and I just hold it, you know, a few inches away and this will dry it very quickly. Once your background is nice and dry, you'll see the look of your colors has changed a bit. They always tend to look darker once they're dry. The color's not actually changing. It's the shiny nature of wet paint that reflects more light, making it appear a shade or two lighter. So if you love your background, we could absolutely stay here. And I've got a nice, lovely light, light area, you know, like the sun shining through heavy, heavy rain. However, if you would like to lighten yours, I want to show you how. And second coats almost always make paintings look much more juicy and rich because acrylic paint actually dries as a sheet of plastic. It's a polymer emulsion. So when we add another layer on top, it's like, you know, thin layers of plastic. So you're really building it up and that's quite lovely. So if we want to tweak this, we don't want to do a whole layer. We just kind of want to spot lighten. So, you know, you could also spot darken, but whatever you do, I want you to make your paint really, really runny. So I'm gonna rinse off my number six bright brush, which is a real favorite for this particular project. We're gonna take a little scoop of our white and just move it over. And we're gonna add water into it until our paint is really runny. Like coffee creamer kind of runny. Okay, now my paint you know, it's so runny when I hold it up. You see it's dripping down there. That's how runny my paint is. It's super duper runny. I want to wipe my brush off so there's just a little bit on there. And it's wet, so my brush is essentially stained. So you see that it's just really runny, kind of stained with a bit of paint. Now, you know, I'm going to focus. It's kind of a small area just in the center. So I'm going to pull in a few streaks and the water will make it more see-through. I'm just going to blend these in little bits at a time. Oops, that was plain white. No. <laughs> Make sure it's the runny white you're going into. So I think less is more with this kind of thing. I'm just going to blend it out. And you can hold your bright brush this way for big strokes or, you know, hold it this way for some little strokes. Let's just keep it going up and down. You now maybe we take a, a little bit of that paint. Like I haven't gone in for more. My brush is just kind of stained. If you've got your smaller square sheet brush, this will get you some different marks as well. You can just continue using the big one on its different sides, but this little guy will get you some fun different size streaky beads. So this is like the sun shining through, you know, a sheet of rain. And of course you can add more water if you need it to be even more see-through. I like to use water because we all have water lying around, but acrylic matte medium is just see-through acrylic. So um, you can use matte medium in place of water for any of the glazing techniques that I do um, in my tutorials. But water is free and sometimes, you know, we just need it free. So you can definitely just get in there with water. So I've just brightened it a bit, but you can totally see uh, what's underneath as well. And of course we'll be pulling our tower right through here. Which is what we're going to do next. 
So you, know, you can see some of these white parts, it's drawing quite see-through. It's see-through, uh, you know, like here, because that was really, really, really watered down white. This can just be fun for creating a focal point. You can glaze with dark color too. You know, if you want even a step darker, you could add a, a tiny bit more, you know, black in here, add some water, and then you can glaze in with the dark colors as well. And if you're like, oh, Jess, I had the opposite problem. Mine is, you know, too light and I want some darker stuff in here. You could totally do the same thing uh, with just some really runny, uh, dark color that works all the ways all the ways okay you've got this don't worry about this bottom we're gonna coat this in a whole whack load of other paint and there's nothing wrong with the lighter background you know on this little guy uh it's a little bit lighter it looks way more backlit so every time i do this project it's a little bit different i oh <laughs> I would really, really love to go to uh, France and see some of the uh, Gothic cathedrals, see the Eiffel Tower. I studied them when I was in school. You know, every time I do this project, it's a little bit different. So, you know, this one was really fast and loose. <laughs> I actually glazed over my Eiffel Tower. Uh, later on to give it a rainy effect here, which I did not do in this. There's no, nothing over top. So I'll show you a few different fun things we can do for this project. But now that we have our background on, it's time to let it dry and to pull in our tower. We're going to get right into the big guns. We're going to get right into that tower. So here we go. Let it dry naturally or hit it with your blow dryer and then let's put our towers on. Once your background is dry, we can put on our tower. The tower is really shrouded at the ends in some of these buildings. Really all the things, the road, the sidewalk, everything kind of points in towards the Eiffel Tower. Uh, you know, we've got some fun things going on there compositionally. Now the Eiffel Tower, even though it's shrouded in mist, it's really, really, you know, you can't see all the lattice work detail. It's essentially a see-through structure. Um, but you know, we just see this misty, misty silhouette through the rain. Even still, getting some of these proportions are really important. So let's take a minute to talk about the Eiffel Tower and uh, her forms before we commit to the paint. If you want to grab a sketchbook and follow along, that can be really fun and helpful to do a few little gesture drawings before we put it right onto our canvas. This project is very loose and abstract, so I don't recommend drawing the whole tower on there. Sometimes we can be our own worst enemy with the pencil and then that can really make things look a little bit stiff. However, I do like to kind of practice on paper even if I'm going to be loose first. And we will want to give ourselves a line down the center of our canvas with a pencil to give ourselves a bit of symmetry. So let's quickly talk about the Eiffel Tower. So I always love giving myself a line, a symmetry line, when I'm trying to do a form that is equal on each sides. Now the line will be the length of our tower. Now the Eiffel Tower has two horizontal beams and then it's almost like an A shape. It reaches up, up, and that first cross right here. You know, this is where the tower joins and it's really lattice work all through here. And there's a landing here, a landing here, and a landing here. So it almost makes a really soft A shape. And that first part here happens in the center of the tower. So the distance from the bottom to here and there to the top is going to be equal. So I always like giving myself a little bit of a tick here. And that is where the tower starts to join. So I always like to give myself a little tick there. You know, it's not super duper wide. It doesn't get super hugely wide. But you know, you can give yourself two little tick marks on the bottom of that tower. And then when we use our paint, let's get into our gray color. And by the way, drawing in pencil is so infinitely different than working in paint that you may want to do your little gesture sketches in paint 
so it, it doesn't feel like the pencil is a pr precise tool and paint is, um, you know, you're pushing around basically yogurt texture. So, you know, once you've got that line on, you've got a little dot in the middle, then we're going to draw that basic shape, which is it gently comes together and up. And I'm using my little number one brush together and up. So it's going to get wider. And now this is like the first landing. So it's going to come out a little bit. And the second landing, so here's like halfway, is at a quarter of the way across. And then this just extends out as well. There's a little landing there. And then we're going to thicken up our tower. And of course, there's a little bit of an arch under here. So, you know, we've got an arch right under the landing. And then our towers thicken, you know, here's our ground line. And then it kind of creates this A shape. as she comes together. So once again, you're going to give yourself a line. And about halfway up is where that tower is going to come together. And you want to come out equal, not too, too far away. She's not super wide. Eiffel Tower is long and lean up. Thicken it up. Just a really simple oops, loose. She's gonna come right to a point at the top. Okay, there's that first landing. And then from here to here, you know the arch is gonna be another quarter of the way down, so we're gonna draw that across. And then, you know, she thickens and widens even more towards the base here. And then, you know, there's uh, an architectural arch under, under here. And, you know, symmetrical-ish is fine. Okay. So we're going to just get quite wide at the base here compared to the top. And there's one more part of the Eiffel Tower. There's a little room up here, so it does thicken towards the top. Not hugely, but you know, I always do a little thickening. So do it in paint as opposed to pencil, using these proportions. And you know, pause if you need to. Practice a few times. And then when you're ready, let's get right in and let's put our Eiffel Tower onto our canvas. I want us to start with that pencil line. So find the center of your canvas and just draw very lightly. It's such a huge pain to have to erase this. You won't be able to see mine, but you know, we did that here. So you remember those proportions. So you've got the line down the center. I usually bring it right, right to the top, to the top. Okay. Now our ground is going to end about here. So just remember how wide you want your tower to be. You know, the width of the tower is definitely not any bigger than half of the tower. So you could use, you know, if my line is here, I could use that halfway proportion to get a really nice, give yourself a little tick on each side. And we're going to use either the same gray that you use as a dark color in your background, or if you make it darker, just the tip, okay? Just the tiniest bit of black. The lightness in color is gonna help us make our tower look like it's really far away. So darken only enough for you to be able to see it. So I'm gonna put a little dot on each side. Now here's my line. I'm also going to put a little dot at the halfway point. I'm going to snuggle in here. So I've got a little line here. I've come out on either side. 
And my line goes from here to here. So this is that halfway point. So this is where our tower is going to reach up to. Okay. Now this gray should be really light, reaching up. Here's my center line here, by the way. I know you can't see it. There's my center line. So I'm going to come up. And the square shape brush is really, really great for this. Like your bright brush, or if you've got a smaller flat brush, use that. Uh, you know, straight lines, straight brush. I'm going to come to a point at the top. That's that halfway point here. So remember, this is where that first arc is going to come straight across. That first horizontal beam is going to come across here. I'm going to widen up, up on the other side. Here's that arc. And then it comes down, you know, wide it on the inside. You can make your gray a bit darker, but only if you have to, to pop it out. Okay. Allow the foot of the tower to get larger. <clears throat> and here's halfway, here's the bottom. So you want to find halfway again because this is where that second horizontal landing is in the tower. And remember under here, this is where our arc is. Now when we're drawing curved lines, having a round brush, like your little number one round, is gonna be really helpful. So you may wanna grab your little pointy one. And here we go. Here's our arch. Her arch. Keep it soft. We're not going to see all the detail of the lattice. It's a day shrouded in heavy rain and mist, and the tower just looms at the end of the street. It's looming in the rain. Just this big delicate architectural presence on a rainy day. Okay. Anytime we're painting something exact, like a tower, as long as we've got the characteristics, um, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is kind of like a character sketch of the tower. You don't have to have every little thing in there. Just have to have some really basic proportions. Okay, excellent. Now at the top, you know, just widen it a little bit on each side. Just widen it at the tip, soft and loose. Okay. There's always ways we could tweak the tower. Now I might widen uh, my A in here a little bit. So we can actually just use the background colors um, to tweak our tower. So, you know, like I went way out kind of on my little side here, it's curving down. I'm not gonna panic about it. I'm not gonna try to wipe it off. I'm just gonna get back in there with some of my background colors and tweak it till it's the way I like it. Now, have fun, get it on, breathe once you've done it. I know especially when you really, really love a place and you're invested in it, it can feel really, really challenging. So, you know, always stop, take a break, have your favorite drink, look at your painting from a distance, 
And I wanna show you a few fun ways that we can tweak our towers. And I'll show you how to do that glazing rain technique, uh, especially for anyone that got their tower really, really dark. This can be a really fun way to make it look super duper rainy. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry my tower and then do the same or let it dry naturally and then meet me back here and we'll tweak and then make it rain. In the same way that we use some really see-through white or maybe some dark color to tweak our rainy background, we can now do the same thing to tweak our tower. In fact, if you want your tower to look really, really shrouded in rain, we can add some see-through white right over top of that tower. So remember, to get that effect, rinse off your number six bright brush, really, really make some white incredibly runny, like as runny as milk, super duper runny. And then you can actually go right over top of your tower, pushing some of it around straight up and down. And this will make your tower look like it's way in behind some misty rain. You could also take some of your colors, you know, if you wanted to come underneath or in here, just match the background color. and you can tweak the outside of your tower. So let me show you both of those things. So if I want to tweak my background color, I need to use some really, really light gray. Because we've got you know, our main gray that's mixed with some white. So kind of like really, really light gray, like this color here, almost white. So you know, if I wanted to widen inside here, Oh, and by the way, if you've got a lot of pencil showing through, you can go ahead and erase that before we tweak. So give it a good erase if you've got some major pencil showing through. And you know, I could take some of this light gray. I wanna make sure, and I can hold my brush here. Now this pretty much matches, right? So if I wanted to make this area a little bit and I put some on, it needs to be a little bit lighter even. Take some of this color. I can actually just repaint in here, making sure that the direction of the brush strokes matches too after I've kind of blocked it out. So I'm gonna widen in here. You don't have to do the same thing if you've got it the way you want it. I'm just gonna show you a few ways you can tweak stuff. And you can do this on the inside or the outside. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Just do what, you know, maybe you don't need to do anything or you just don't want to touch it. That's good too. But I want to show you for those of you that really want to tweak stuff. So, you know, you could tweak on the outside too. So I could take some of this background color and don't be scared to just, it's a rainy background. So put it on if you need to lighten or darken the color. Just go right over top. Now you could kind of tweak your shapes inside and out. It's just little bits of that background color. Like if your arc is super wonky, just take a little bit of your gray and clean up your arch. Okay. Excellent. So feel free to tweak anything inside or outside just by mixing the same color you had in the background and then kind of just gently you know, going around the edges. So if your bobble at the top, your tower at the top got too big, you can just go around that. There's always ways we can make things look a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller by going just around those outside edges. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you. Now you could just leave it here, which is essentially what I did uh, for this tower. But if you wanna make it rain, like I did in that one painting, you know, you're gonna do that with some really, really, really runny white. If you wanna go over your tower to make it look like it's really, really shrouded under a veil of rain, do make sure if you've done any tweaky deekies 
but to really, really, really let those dry because we, we will smudge it when we blend over it with our watery white. Then take your bright brush, rinse it off for me, rinse it, rinse, and make sure you've got some really, really runny white. The more runny it is, the more see-through it's going to be. And once again, just touch, make sure this is really dry for me. I'm going to soak my brush in some runny white. If you want to go slow with this technique, you're not sure if you're going to like it, you can even tap your brush off. So you've got just a little bit of pink on there. And you don't have to overcommit. Now then just up and down. Just push that paint around. You do it really, really subtle. And this is how it looks up close. So just really, really light and subtle even. And I'm just using some really runny white. And I'm going to push it in here. You could do it on the outside of the tower too if you like the color of your tower. You could just kind of come along the outside with some runny white and pop it out a little. Now you don't have to do any of this, of course. This is just an option. You can also pop your tower out by pulling some of this on the outside, just on the outside, or right over top, of course. That's fun too. Any other places you want to make it rain, do it now because we're going to get into the bottom half of our painting after this. So have fun with this. I hope you enjoy this technique. Now we have quite a few layers just for a background, but she is the star even though she's way, way, way off in the distance. When you're done tweaking your tower, when you're done tweaking your rain, so one more thing, one more thing. It's hard to stop sometimes. <laughs> I'm pulling some light gray on the side here. I always trust your intuition. You know, every time I do this, I do it a bit different because, you know, even though it's based on the same project, every one is a little different. Okay, <laughs> when you're done, put your brushes down. We're going to keep going with our medium gray color here, that first one that we mixed. We're going to clean up our horizon line, and then we're going to draw the perspective lines in to get our street there. So take your number six bright brush, your nice square shaped brush, and I'll wipe it in. I love paper plates because they're stiff and I can scrape on those edges to make sure my brush is really pinched down to a nice thin line. Then let's draw across. I don't know about you, but mine got really messy. So I'm just going to draw right across here, straight across. the bottom, and fill in any spots I missed. <laughs> so I don't want to lose any of my tower. So draw that horizon line right across. So just cleaning up that edge for me. Whoop. Now we're going to draw in our street. And the street actually comes right out to the corners and starts on the inside arc of our tower. So it really cuts across and the sidewalk lines will fit inside there. But for now, let's take our gray. You know, for perspective, that street really has to pull in. So hold your number six bright brush. Make sure it's pulled down to a thin fin. You can get that by pulling it with your fingers or scraping it on a hard surface. Okay, now hold your brush so it's you know, the long 
skinny way, right underneath your tower and then right to the bottom corner. Here we go. Just whoop. It's right up there. So right into the center, and then right off here. Now when we do pull our sidewalk in, we'll pull it out a little something like this. But for now, let's just, we're gonna fill this in. So you don't have to pull them in just yet. For now, start on the inside of your tower, and then whoop, right off towards those corners. Now eventually we're going to be filling in these triangle shapes, but for now we're going to start with the road. For now we're going to start with our road. We're going to make it a little bit messy, so we'll clean up these outer triangles in a minute. For now we're going to fill in this road, and here we actually have a really lovely gradation of our light gray to a medium gray to a charcoal gray and some black. So we're really getting into all the values in our gray scale. So let's rinse off our number six bright brush. Now we've got a light gray, and we can mix in a little bit of black for a medium gray. Let's add a little bit more for a charcoal gray. And then we'll get right into the black, so we've got a full range Light, medium, charcoal, black. So make sure you've got a light gray, a medium gray, charcoal gray, and then some pure black. One, two, three, four. And these are the colors we're going to pull into our street. We're going to start at the top. We're going to use our bright brush and we're just going to go side to side. If you're on a bigger canvas like a 16 by 20, go ahead and use a bigger brush like your Filbert brush or your number 12 flat brush. Let's start with our light color. And we're going to go outside of this line that we drew a little bit. Let's start at the top. Let's start at the top. We're just going to go side to side. A nice juicy coat. You can go right over that line to start. That was our practice line. So light gray, almost halfway down. Then wipe right into the medium gray. Start below. We don't want a harsh line, so once you pull some of this second lightest gray up towards, you're going to blend it up and in. You could create some streaky dickies, but just not a solid harsh line. When you're ready, go into your next darkest gray. We're gonna leave just like a little, little bit for that pure black. Okay. Bring this up by hovering just a little bit to blend it and pulling a few streaks up. When you're ready, rinse your brush, tap it on your napkin. We're going to start pulling this from the bottom and we're going to wrap this color right around the bottom edge if you're on a stretch canvas and you've got a frame. Start at the bottom, and out we go. That black is really powerful in a grayscale painting. Let's blend it in. Go right over these lines a little. Okay. Now this white we add later to create some puddles. For now we just want this kind of thing going on. A subtle blend up into our lighter gray. Okay, I'm going to take some of my medium gray 
I'm just going to clean up that horizon a little bit. Just pop it out a little bit. So once you get a nice subtle fade, I'm going to take some of my light gray and I'm going to break up that black just a little. It is a really powerful color. We want to have some fun streaky dickies that will make our street look a bit more reflective in the end. So just get yourself a nice fade all the way up. Pause if you need to. We're going to start filling in the sides. So I want you to rinse your brush off. Tap it on a napkin. And we're going to begin by carving in our sidewalk with some black. So rinse your brush and then just wipe it into the black. So you've got just like a little bit on there. Pinch it down. We're going to start drawing the sidewalk. We're going to redraw the inside line of our road. Now we've come out a little bit. So remember when you're drawing a nice skinny line with your straight brush, with your bright brush, you want to put it in this way and then whoop right down. So pinch the edge so it's nice and flat. Wipe into the black. So let's draw the inside of our road. Now that line is going to be about here. Now we'll draw the outside a little bit. So you want this inside line just a little bit in. I'm going to start mine right about here. I'm going to bring it down into the corner. So here we go. Just carve right into that wet paint we just put on there. It's all good. Now we're going to do the smaller sidewalk. And then again for perspective, we need it to get quite small and then really, really big. So you know down here, it, you know, from the edge, it comes up almost like two inches, and then it's going to get really, really small as it goes back. And things always get bigger as they come towards us in space. Don't worry if all your sidewalk area isn't filled in. We'll get there. But for now, we're just going to redraw these lines. So wipe into your black again. When I say wipe, I'm wiping into the color like this because it keeps that edge really nice and flat. And we're going to do the other side. So again, we're going to get the inside of our sidewalk coming down. And then the outside getting a lot bigger up the side. So we've got our road. And again, don't worry that that's not all filled in. We'll get there. While my paint is still wet, I sometimes like to almost thicken the shadow while well, it's a street corner. I'm just pulling it through the wet road and getting a little bit bigger. It's really defining our street. We've got it all filled in with a wonderful ombre. We're going to highlight some puddles, just building in those dark tones carving out the strip of the sidewalk. Take your time and pause anytime you want to. Okay, good. Once you've got here, it's time to do these outside triangular shapes. So I love this everything, this street, these side patches of land, are buildings that are going to kind of mimic this line. You know, we've got this car arc coming here, this one coming in here. They're all, everything is just pointing towards that misty, misty rain covered tower. So we want to fill this in also. So the lines kind of come up and then flatten out. So the direction is kind of, you know, straight through here, pointing up and in and then flattening out towards the tower. So the direction of our brush strokes matters. So let's rinse off our little number six bright brush. Get that black off. Let's 
tap it on our napkin. And we're going to start with that first gray that we used. That first gray that we used, you know, in our rain, that kind of lighter medium gray. And we're going to fill this whole triangle in, you know, kind of in this sort of brush strokes, these sort of directions. So this is the direction. to come in with one of your more you know, medium grays. Pull a few streaks in here too. I'm just wrapping my colors around the side edges as I go. Really subtle, just kind of pulling in towards the tower. I'm going to take some of these medium grays. I'm going to kind of fill in. So it's black. Get out of there. I'm going to come into some of these medium grays. I'm just going to kind of wiggle in here. Any areas that you know I didn't cover. I'm going to get in there with the paint. Now with the sidewalks, when we're wiggling in, it's very important that all of our lines, all of our wiggles, are totally horizontal. Now, I don't know what it is. There is a human phenomena that I have witnessed from years of painting with people. We, when we are trying to do a straight line, when we're going on an angle, like a straight line against an angle, our mind always wants to make it a right angle. So you can even see mine subtly kind of bend in sometimes. Um, and in worst case scenarios, they get really bent in and then the, we lose the perspective. So when we do the lines in our sidewalk, we're going to do our best all the way up to have them straight because that's how perspective works. So even when I'm wiggling in some of this random color, I don't want, th this will make our perspective look really, really funny if our sidewalk lines bow in, right? They have to be flat across. So even if you're just wiggling up some fun color just to fill this all in, whoops. We still have to make sure you know, our brush is nice and horizontal. Okay. There we go. We're just wailing in that color, loose and abstract. Just in the general shape of our sidewalk. Okay. Making sure it's all filled in, loosey goosey like. Then we can do our other triangle side. Stick to some of these lighter colors to start. And we're pointing up and in. Pulling in maybe a little bit of a darker gray in this medium range here. If you want some fun streaky dickies. Okay. Fun. We're going to do a few more details into our street. We're going to pull in some puddles. We're going to pull in some reflections. We're going to pull in some rain and the sidewalk cracks. And then we're going to get into our buildings and our trees. 
So we do want, this is the whole underpainting. This is the stuff that's underneath. We filled in the whole canvas now. We want this to be dry before we really get into pulling in some of these reflections. Now my road is dry, but I've still got quite a bit of wet paint in my grassy land areas and in my sidewalk. I don't want us to risk smudging. I've already smudged a bunch of mine into my road down here, which I'm going to have to cover up. So let's give these guys a little bit of a dry, either naturally or with your blow dryer, and then we're going to start detailing in the lower part of our painting. We're going to pull some puddles into our street. So let's take a look here. We've got some really, really white streaky dickies coming down and then you know along the side. Then we're going to switch to more of a light gray. We're going to pull puddles here, a few streaks in here. So pure white and it's going to be that runny, runny white so we get that um, layered effect so we can see what's in behind. The water makes it a bit more see-through. So we're going to highlight at the top then get into some light gray and then maybe a few puddles down the side. So let's mix our liquidy colors now. Grab your number six spray brush, give it a good rinse, tap it on your napkin, and you know, if you're out of really runny white, add some water to some white now. And let's do the same thing with more of a light gray. And we want a gray that is going to be a little bit lighter than this even. So kind of something in between, yeah, more like this color. So a little bit of a light gray. Let's make it a little bit more runny. This will help it be see-through. Okay, so you've got some runny light gray. You've got some runny white mixed up. When you've got your colors, tap your brush, and let's go ahead and let's make some puddles into our painting. Now we do want the bulk of them to be nice and horizontal. So let's start with our white. I like going in my runny white and then tapping my brush on my napkin. So I've got just a little bit of paint. You know, we can always add more. I'm going to come across, adding some highlights up here. And you know, sometimes I like to kind of use the side of my brush and maybe wiggle down the street a little. Just highlighting it. I'm not going to go into any more paint here. Rinse my brush, tap it. I'm going to go more into this light gray. And I'm going to again tap my brush so there's just a little bit of paint on it. And it should be really runny. I'm going to make it a bigger, it needs a bit more water. This big puddle coming down the side. Maybe a few streaky dickies down here. adding some puddles into our street. If you go too far, don't worry, you can always add a few more of your darks back in there. Let's get some highlights in there, keep it runny, keep it really liquidy for me. Nice and horizontal. You can always brighten things as you go. So if you want a really much brighter puddle, can.
once you've added some puddles into your road, one thing that makes it look really, really reflective is some of these vertical streaky deekies. Now we can do these with our number six bright brush, and definitely if you're on a 16 by 20, the number six bright is great. If you have a smaller bright brush, this works really wonderful too. Sorry, this is a little number six flat brush, so a smaller square. Go into that runny white, tap a lot of it off, and we're gonna pull in a few vertical reflections with this runny white. So right up and down, Keep it really see-through, really loose. Pull in a few vertical reflections in the white. Blend them in. And you can also tap into these. So using, if you've got the number six bright, it works the same. And after you've got some vertical marks in there, wipe into your white, and you can use a more solid white for this, so not just the runny white. And then I want you to tap into a few of these. Start at the bottom. A few little taps. Keep it loose, keep it messy. Now if your lines got a little bit too distinct, you can always go back in there with a little bit of your runny white and tap in there. And the reason we have these, if you're ever out on a rainy day, all lights reflect in a shiny surface up and down. So if you're at, say, a street light, look into the road. You'll see the red or the yellow or the green as a big vertical streak in the wet pavement. So these kinds of things really, really help give us that illusion of it being a really, really rainy, wet, slick street. Let's keep this really messy, really loose. I just took my corner and I squiggled into the side of the sidewalk and I thought it gave it a really kind of puddle sort of look. Okay. So I know they look kind of strange, but once you've got the little rain drops in there, it's really gonna, um, and we get some more details into our sidewalks. I promise those won't look so, you know, lonely in there. Now, once you've highlighted your road, gotten in some of the vertical reflections, we're gonna pull some little lines into our sidewalk. Now remember, it's very difficult to make sure that they're straight but that's really important. And another thing that makes them look like they're going um, off into space, so giving it that perspective, is making sure that they're bigger and then they slowly get much, much closer together. So you know down here, this is like two inches, and then up here it's barely a pinky's width in between. So they're gonna get closer together as they get farther away. You can see up close, you know, these are just um, vertical streaks with taps in them. But we use that runny white, and then far away, it really gives it that fun, um, reflective look into our street and sidewalk. Okay, so here we go. Use a nice flat brush, a nice square shaped brush. I'm using my number six bright brush, one that has a nice flat edge. With the number six right, pinch it down. We're gonna go into the black and we're gonna do those sidewalks. If it helps, you know, you may want to have 
Uh, so I'm going to make sure that you're coming nice and, and straight. So we're going to come straight across. Don't angle these bad boys. Check it. I'm already on a bit of an angle. You have to be right in front <clears throat> to make sure you're nice and flat. Okay. So here we go. Just tap across. So I've got two really big sidewalks. I'm going to start to get smaller and smaller, smaller. And then these ones up here, I just kind of use the corner of my bright brush. If you have a smaller square, you can use that. Right, so just tap down. These ones are so close together. Now we're getting bigger and bigger and bigger as we come down. Try to make sure that they're straight. It's an old sidewalk. It's an old city. You can darken some of these sidelines if you want. You don't have to. Just add shadows if you feel like it needs it. Okay. So once you've got these sidewalk lines in, we're going to pull some reflections into our sidewalk as well. So I want you to get the sidewalk lines in, that perspective leading way, way, way back to the tower. We've got this. Keep going. And then we're going to pull in some puddles with some of our runny white, some of our runny gray. So let's stick with our little bright brush. And let's go into some really runny white. You can tap your brush to make sure that you know, it doesn't run. And then I often pull a puddle in. So let's go square by square. So sometimes I'll come across the top, you know, wiggle down the side and pull it out. Or sometimes I just do almost like a little L shape. So you can go really white. This one's maybe a little too white. You could switch to your gray if you feel like it's getting too, too white. Or, you, know, you can add some of your dark gray back in there to tone some of them down. I want you to get some kind of puddles pooling in your sidewalks. Start light, you can always add. Some darks back in if it's too light. Right in between the cracks of the sidewalk. I'm just using the whole side of my brush here. Once you've got the sidewalks filled in, you're going to make it rain. So take your tiny little number one round brush, and we're going to pull some little raindrops in here. So this time we're going to go into some plain white. So rinse, tap, let's go into some plain white. Really kind of just a little bit of paint on your brush, just a little bit on the tip. And we're going to do some little dots, taps dashes, and they can go all kinds of ways. A little bit up and down makes it look like it's just falling. 
can flatten it out. You can highlight back in here again if you want to brighten some of this up. But let's kind of, I usually kind of stick in this lower two thirds where you can really visibly see these raindrops. Sometimes they come up the reflections. Again. Have a few of these on your sidewalk. Two. Loosen up here, any kind of fun little squiggles or wiggles that you want to do. It's just fine. Now sometimes I even take a little bit of my white and I add a few little white dots coming up here. Now, this isn't something you see in the real world, but in like photographs in the rain, you know, lights often turn into these little kind of dots. So sometimes I come along this landmass and I add kind of a few of these flare dots. Maybe a little highlight across the top. Just drag across a little bit of white. Only if you want to. You're doing great. Believe it or not, doing the tower and then detailing the ground, we've completed most of the painting. After this, we've got some really, really just a uh, background, almost like an architectural feature here. Um, the main feature is, of course, the rainy atmosphere and the tower. So these buildings just give it really perspective. They crowd everything in, as do the trees, really giving the street some depth. So when you're done tweaking the street, and please spend as much time um, on your rainy street as you would like to, And you can get back in there with some black if you've lost some of your black. But once we're done with this, we're going to get on up into those buildings. Before moving on to our trees. Just using my little number one brush here to... Bring back some of the sidewalk cracks. Let's put some buildings in the background. And we want our buildings to really mimic our arc here. So everything's pointing up. 
and in towards the tower here. Everything's pointing down towards our tower here. So you're gonna have some big buildings coming in, and you know, you've got some wiggle room with where you start your buildings, but I typically start them, you know, close to where the sidewalk begins. I'm gonna, you can have them lower, or you could be really, really drastic and have them come higher, or a little somewhere in between. But let's use our square sheet brush. And we're gonna go for a medium gray that's a little bit on the darker side. So you're gonna go more for something that's a bit darker than our sky color. So not a lot darker. I usually go for something It's about a shade darker than my sky color. A couple shades. Something a little like this. You're going to start, you know, maybe a little building straight up here. And then they're going to come up, up as high as you want them. We'll wrap them around the side edge. Okay, let's fill these in. Wrap them around the side edge if you're doing the side edge thing. And once you've got them on one side, you can go ahead and put some buildings on the other side. Start low and then come way up high. You could make the angle even more drastic for if you wanted it looking super perspective y. Sometimes I turn upside down when I'm painting. Just whatever is easier for you to do. So pushing that Eiffel Tower back, way back in the distance, through, down the street through the trees, through the buildings, beneath the rain. She's still this kind of monolithic tower, even from this far away. And now this really pushes her back because we've actually overlapped her feet, which makes her look super far away. And we've got all these kind of perspective lines pointing in and up and towards. It's just so much fun. Okay, you know, we've got some of these darker grays, nice, the lighter grays in our gray scale, some of the darker and medium grays down here. I don't know about you, but sometimes I muck up my ground line here. Cleaning up this line a little bit. I can never seem to stop mucking with my sidewalk. Now we've got our buildings in. So there's just a few steps left. We want to pull some really, really subtle, and I'm really loosey-goosey with this. And I don't do, I pull some lights in the buildings, and I pull some little, you know, details, some street lamps into the back, but it is not, it's really, really loose. It's really, really abstract. So I'm not defining perfect squares for the windowsills, like doing the details of the frame. So 
The point of this painting is atmospheric. It's lights and darks. It's softness. It's abstractness. And, you know, in the original, look how abstract I was. You know, the tower is even loosely painted. And it's, but it's like that all over, which you can actually see how quick and energetically it was painted. And that's part of, like, the magic. So really pulling in these windows in a fun, loose way. Now, it's okay to pull them in, and I did in this painting, while the gray was still wet. But while we're waiting, why don't we pull some of these details in behind? Because it's abstract, the person looking at it, the viewer, can use their own imagination and make up uh, what they want to see, right? So um, it's quite fun when you aren't so precise, then people get to use their imagination in play. So some people think those little things in the distance are people with umbrellas. Uh, I actually conceived of them as street poles with street lights on them. But I've heard all kinds of people, I think these are different things, but essentially I'm going to pull in some charcoal gray um, kind of poles or straight lines and then some white dots on top. So, you know, I was thinking just city things, poles, lights, uh, people. So, you know, this can be any of those things. So let's get into some, you know, fun gray, the same gray as the buildings, or maybe even a bit darker if you want. Um, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to this. It's a different every time I do it, but sometimes the little number one round brush for me, your little detail brush. If your paint's starting to dry, you can add a little bit of water to help it flow. Tap it so there's just a bit of paint on there. And maybe we just get some little holes or dabs. I did something like this today. I'm going to rinse the brush, tap it just to make sure there's no water going to drip down our painting and to help clean off any extra stuff. Just the tip into some white, make sure there's just a little paint on the brush. And we can dab some little lights across. This is a tiny detail. You tap into it, you can fuzz them out a little bit. So it's just a fun little city detail. There's stuff going on. It's always busy in Paris. <laughs> We're gonna add some windows. Use white or really, really light gray. And of course with perspective, they're gonna be much smaller. Up here. And they're going to get bigger. So I'm using the whole side of my little number one brush. If you're working on a bigger canvas, you know, I often use um, my bright brush, a square shape brush. So, you know, brushes are intuitive. Use whatever, you know, fits best in the shape you're working with. So I just really roughly pull some windows in here. Just a bit of paint, I kind of scrubbed it in. Nothing too fancy. I usually do two rows. You can be fancy with this if you want. You can be more precise. It's just a different style of painting. As soon as you've got some lights in your windows, we're going to let this dry and then we're going to pull up a couple trees here. We're going to pull up a couple trees. Last but certainly not least, we're going to pull in some trees into our painting and this really adds another layer, pushing the buildings into the back, pushing the tower even further behind a bunch of layers um, to give us that fun perspective. So this also is one of the only true, 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 true black things in our painting, except for the very tip of our road. Now, if you're on an 11 by 14, and we are gonna start with the trunks, um, you can use your little number one round brush. If you're working on a bigger size, like a 16 by 20, use your square shape brush, use your bright brush. So 
So if you're working on a bigger canvas, use this uh, to pull up those trunks because it's a long way. And if you go too far, you know, the tip of this brush is really wibbly. And if, and it can, if you go, have to go a long way up, it can definitely, you know, get you some bends that you don't want. So your bright brush or your little brush, but make sure to really, really pull it down to a nice thin fin. And we're gonna pull up some trunks. So think about where we want these trees. I usually have one kind of um, in the middle here. So I'm gonna pull up a little trunk right from here. I push that brush in, go into a bit of black, and then whoop, straight up. And I usually come just above the horizon line here. I usually come just above the horizon line. Just up, okay, and I stopped it here. And then on the other side, I love having one tree here and one tree here. So one that's fairly close again, I'm putting my long skinny square brush, the long skinny way, you know, where you want the head of your tree to be. Just pull a little trunk coming straight up. Now these are big girthy trunks with huge roots. These are city trees, these are little, decorative trees and no matter where they are we're going to stop the trunks at the same height so i'm going to have another little tree um, you know a bit further up here and i'm going to bring them all so that all the trunks come up to just a little bit above the horizon line and then when you're ready we'll tap in that foliage now these are very stylized trees they have almost like a cone a cone shape or a cylindrical shape. So when you're ready, now you can use the corner of your square shape brush, or we could switch to our nice little number one round brush. But let's just tap in the basic shape first with some of our solid black. So I basically do a little cone shape, just tapity tap tap. And you know, less stabbing with the tip. I kind of use the side of the brush and just dab, 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 dab. And let's just bring them up a little ways. Give ourselves a little tree in here. I always have a nice big one. This is our final layer, so it can be nice and thick. Now keep them loose. Have a few kind of random dabs at the edges, kind of loosening up at the edges. This helps give it that dappled look of foliage. So see if there's some looser taps around the edge. So I've got this really solid shape here, and if I have just a few little kind of loose taps around the edge, Gives it more of that kind of sun dappled look. Not everything has to be attached to make it look like a tree. Okay. And if you hated your buildings, <laughs> this gives you a chance to cover them up. So this one's further away, so it's gonna be skinnier and a little bit shorter. So here's our little tree. Still loosening it up. Now, if you're working on a 16 by 20, you could use your number six round brush. Now, adding these trees is the last official step to Paris in the rain. So at the end of the painting, I always recommend kind of stepping back from it, taking a look from a distance, making sure everything pops out, seeing if there's any you know, really, really bright highlights or low lights or things you might want to uh, tweak before calling it a night. So this is where I ended up with my Paris today. It's a little bit different every time I do it. So this is just the base covering that grayscale, covering those techniques. I hope you enjoyed them and you picked up a few new acrylic tips and tricks. You can always find more from me on my website there at jessierobertson.com. And if you share your painting to social media, be sure to tag me at keepitcolorful, all one word, so that I can find you. 
Then you can find more projects from me over on Facebook at facebook.com slash keepitcolorful and over on Instagram at instagram.com slash keepitcolorful. I hope you have a fabulous day for the rest of it. Ooh la la. Bye.